Merry Litmus. My name is Crystal, and I'm here to talk about the Litmusy Litastic game of Grand Canyon University's men's basketball. As mentioned, and as attired, um, hopefully, I got a Christmas tree out here. I hope you can see it. Um, the theme is Litmus. And I want to start off with giving a shout out to the Havocs. They were in loptastically litmus form. The way they represent it was just... Anyway, I just want to start off with the, just an awesome shout out to the Havocs for bringing that vibe in that respect. And of course, I had to do my part on it. So now for the game itself. Okay, basketball players, we have talked about you not messing with my, you know, blood pressure and my anxiety by having these close games and then pulling out the last second. They're, they're, they're really not fun, you know. You started off good. I mean, you started off first like three and a half minutes or so. You were great. You know, you immediately got a five-point lead and... I was like, okay, we're going, but let's not, you know, it's good. And then, but unlike last year, UT Arlington came to play. I mean, whew. like I said in my previous video, they beat um, Stephen F. Austin by 15 points in their conference opener. It was 86 to 71. They, they beat that one. So they were coming in 1-0 in conference play. We were, we were doing our home opener. 1-0 in conference play. And so it was an even footing at that. And they've played, U UT Arlington has played some majorly impressive venues. And just, I mean, not like this, you know, lost by, by you know, single digits to some top players. And so you know they're serious, you know. Um, so we, we, we respect our opponents in that respect and they were worthy of it because after like the first three and a half minutes or so um they really and they, every time we started to get a, a little more of a lead they came back and you know and then eventually they took the lead and um they finished a half with a four point lead and even though it was just four points um i i was i i had a bad feeling about it i just did and so I told my other basketball buddies um, that I said, you know, I, I'm going to go spend 20 minutes um, either what, you know, just getting ready for church. I had some, I had some um, things from my church that I had to prep for the next morning. And um, I said, I'm just going to work on that for right now. And I, I'm not even going to, I said, at least 20 minutes, 20 minutes later, I set my, I set a little timer, 20 minutes went off. I came back. And I saw that we had not gained a lead back. It was not good. And I'm like, okay, um, we're keeping the sound off this game. We're not going to watch anything. We will follow the stats on the ESPN app. And that's about it. And which was actually good for me because I, I missed some things that could have really been anxiety inducing, like a 12 point deficit. Seriously, guys, that was not cool. You know, and part of the reason for the 12 point deficit, <sighs> this is really bad. My awesome player, my awesome Tyler, Tyler Tyon Grant Foster, um, there's a technical call on him. And I saw it later, I don't fully understand it, but the other team, they were able to get four shots as a result, four free throws, two for the technical and two for the personal foul. You know, and then they, and then as soon as that was done, they had possession of the ball and they immediately got a bucket after that. So they got six shots in with like maybe a minute taken off the clock. It was, her, it was, it was, it was terrible for us anyway. I mean, it was just, and the refs, oh, that was something else as well. First half, the refs, I actually thought they were fine because they were just letting the guys do what they do and, you know, if they wanted to get physical and, and whatever, they just did. 
Second half, they started calling ticky tech things and spending way too much time at that monitor and, and, and checking out every little detail. It's like, can we just go already? You know, and you watch a, a, a arena full of litmus uh, clad students just go silent because there's nothing going on. It was, you know, but like I said, this is while I was not watching. I was doing my own thing for the next morning and just following the stats. So I, and I told myself, I am not going to turn this show back on until we're ahead. I even told my buddies, like, don't, you know, let me know when we're ahead because this was just, but, you know, fortunately, my, my, you know, my, my GCU men's basketball, they, they, they did their thing. You know, they, 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 they turned it on when it was most needed and their defense was incredible, you know, and, and, and held them back, you know, held UTA, UT Arlington from getting more and more buckets because it could have just been a bloodbath if we had let it be. Let's be honest, it really could have been bad. Um, but, you know, and I have to give shout outs throughout this whole game to some key players. First of all, I want to start off by, I forgot to welcome, really, really welcome back uh, Josh Baker, AKA The Bake Show. Um, he was instrumental in our game against um, UTRGV la um, previous, and he got 10 points this game, you know, uh, and just just getting those buckets when we need it most and things of that nature. Bravo, bravo. Um, of course, Tyon Grant Foster, TGF, got his second career double-double, 21 points and 10 boards, you know, amazing, amazing. You know, uh, Gabe McLaughlin, he almost got a double-double, 16 points and nine rebounds, you know. Um, you know, so he was great. Ray Harrison, see, here's the thing with Ray Harrison. He is known for being the bucket man. He is known for making everything happen. So everybody guards Ray Harrison, you know, um, which he's okay with because that leaves room for Tyon F Grant Foster to get points and, and other people to get points and things of that nature. But he still, he got 11 points, uh, three boards, and even three steals. So you can't really keep a good man down like Ray Harrison, you know? Just that it, it is who he is, you know? So we had good players doing things and throughout this game and hitting clutch points. Um, you know, it, it was it, Isaiah Shaw um, got five key free throws that we desperately needed um, down the stretch. You know, but still, like I said, th these things were 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 happening. Um, most uh, mo almost all of this was happening while I had the sound while I did not have the game on, just following stats. Because I said I am not going to turn it back on until I see a lead, and I was I was fearing the worst. I was fearing I was I was fearing the L. I, I I and we have not gotten one of those on our home floor this season. I really was not wanting one now. I just didn't want one. You know, uh, I don't ever want one, but you know, anyway, um, so there was that. And then about, you know, it was the, I believe the score was, um, uh, it, it was, it was within three, you know, um, and I want to say it was Gabe McLaughlin. I'll check that, um, see if I'm wrong, but we've got two badly needed free throws about a minute and 24 uh, from the end of the second half that that flipped it so that we were up by a point. And I, I messaged my buddies and I, I turned to sound back on and messaged my buddies like, if we could just hold or um, uh, even increase this lead for the next 84 seconds, we'll be safe. And also I wanted to say that during halftime, another thing I did, and this is something I do a lot, uh, particularly when, when we're not doing well, is I will message my... Um, my, my women's prayer group or, or people from my church, I'll say, please pray for my team. And more often than not, it, it does work out. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that God likes us best. I'm just saying that when I ask people to pray for us, generally speaking, good things happen. Just saying. Anyway, um, so 
We were down, we, we, we had only had a, a minute and 24 seconds left and we were up by one point, you know. Uh, and the wheels started coming off for UT Arlington right about that time. They were turning the ball over constantly. It, it, was, it, was, it was good for us, but it was weird for them, you know, and they were missing shots. Uh, I found out later they have what at least two of their. I want to say they have two freshmen that are that are, you know, playing a lot. So that you know has a you know being a freshman just don't know, you know, but so affects you know they're still talented because like you said you know they had the lead for like twenty two minutes of the game so no disrespect, but yeah it was it was intense and then so we got that and we got some stops and then we managed to make some very key free throws at the end um and eventually when it was all said and done we won by seven points we had 76 they had 69 and it was like oh okay i remember as a matter of fact um you know during that time it was it you know when we got you know to three point and then four point uh up and and once we got to like five points and it was like within 10 seconds or four seconds, it was okay, we're good. We're good. Nothing really should happen at this point. And just the final two free throws from the Bake Show himself, Josh Baker, just sealed the deal. And we got it. They tried for a, a half court shot the last second. Uh, didn't work for him in this time. But I will tell you, I definitely have respect for UT Arlington. They, they fought hard and it was bloody you know, not not in a physical sense in a in a, in a metaphorical sense um but it, it it really was like that but in the end gcu prevailed god answers prayer so um that was awesome at the end um i'm really appreciative of the some of the words of some of the key players because um they said that we need to do better um you know, because we had eight minutes of really good playing. You know, we need to like make that be the whole 40 minutes of playing like that. If we could play really, really amazing like that for a whole 40 minutes, then, then you know, we, we can't be beat. Which brings me to our game on Tuesday, December 5th. We are playing, get this. San Diego State University. Okay, that is only the runner-up to the 2023 um, NCAA Men's National Championship last March. They're coming to our house. I mean, how, how fantastic is that? They are formidable, and they're coming into our house. So, I'd say right now, everybody pray for favor that we hit our we hit all our buckets. We don't turn the ball over. We make our free throws. You know, no injuries on anybody's part. You know, everybody stays healthy. No accidents. Nothing like that happening on anybody, either side, coaches, refs, anybody. Nothing gets you know. But you know, this is going to be a game. This is going to be. It's it's going to be such a game. Here's the thing. We already have students. Our Havocs are camping out right outside the uh, arena area. They have a thing called Camp Elliot, and they will put up little tents and things like that. You know, they're already doing that in anticipation for this game. That's how intense it is. Um, it's going to be a whiteout. So, yes, I will be wearing white um, for, for the event. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be televised nationally on ESPNU. So that means our my our regular uh, TV broadcasters who I think are just the best in the business, Barry Butel and, and uh, Scott Williams with of course uh, Kate Longworth, those are the best on the TV broadcast team. Uh, but they won't be there. They will have the ESPNU broadcasters who I'm sure are awesome, but they're just not, you know, Scott Williams, Barry Butel and Kate Longworth, you know. So I will be watching that on mute while listening to 1580 The Fanatic, um, to Lopes Insider Paul Coro and the voice.
Bliss of the Lopes, Michael Potter. That is the best way to follow these games by far. So, uh, and with that, thank you for sharing, listening to, um, following my retelling of this event. Don't forget to like this video, share. Um, um, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I've heard a rumor that if when you, the more subscribers you get, it increases our chances of winning more games. Don't know if that's true, but hey, it's worth a shot, right? So please subscribe if you're if you haven't already, and you know also look for links below for uh, various uh, Paul Coro's event things of that nature. Anything I can find that I can put in there, I will, and and what have you. So my name is Crystal, and loves up.